Well, guys, the vlog of today will be a little bit different because you're gonna watch my first sparring session with Tiago. I mean, I would say this is more of a light spar sparring session that we had. And we did light spar on kickboxing. And I mean, you can just see there's no technique at all from myself. I mean, Tiago has a way better technique because he's the one teaching me the martial art. And I'm just really in the beginnings of it. And I was so hyped about finally doing a, a sparring session or something of that sort. And you're going to watch it all the way in this B-roll footage for this vlog. And I hope you guys like it. Well, about last week. So I ended the last chapter talking about the problems I had with AWS S3 and the AWS SDK. Well, here's the recap about that. I fixed it like next day or something <laughs> and it's just working smoothly. We are storing the projects directly onto the S3 bucket folder of the corresponding user's project. And we actually added on top to another AWS service that is AWS SES. So simple email service or something of that sort. It's simply for us to send emails. So now we are starting to experiment with that and we can send a formal email with our domain and the sender info. Well, what I took of these two implementations. So first, if you are using Next.js, uh, the SDK, a quick one, it does not go on edge runtime. So you won't have edge runtime for the SDK. And that's really sad for us because we were actually doing authentication on the edge and we cannot have an email being sent after doing authentication because it just compromises the edge runtime and so we have to unfortunately give up on the edge for now we'll see probably the sdk evolves in, a, in the near future and we will be happy to come back to the edge on authentication because i think it makes a huge difference because the edge is just way faster in my opinion and since we do not have load balancers and cdns and terms of service servers as of right now <laughs> obviously because that's extremely expensive uh the edge is actually a good alternative for that however we cannot use the edge with the aws sdks at the moment well i might in the future investigate a little bit because i do think that lambda aws lambda as a runtime on the edge so one possible solution would perhaps be have the AWS Lambda function on the edge runtime, send the email or something, and therefore we don't compromise. But for now, I just can't see the solution, probably won't think about it, but we'll see. We'll update you guys if I change anything on that. Well, a quick tip on making custom emails. I would highly advise you guys to use MGML. So it's xml formatted so you know the syntax that you see on html and all those sorts and basically what you do is you go on the mgml editor and you learn a little bit about the syntax really simple you can do that in one day and you get incredibly responsive emails and it looks really cool and i would highly advise you doing that you just a quick tip too on that is you do your configuration on their editor because it's always up to date with their syntax. And then you export to HTML and use it on your Next.js app, React, Svelte, wherever you use on the web or anything related. And that's simple as that. <laughs> and then you use SES or whatever your provider, desired provider is. I'm just saying this so that you don't feel like me and just go fancy. Uh, downloading some library that converts MGML to HTML. Just don't do that, okay? That's not how it works. I mean, if it works, it's not the best way. So I'm just advising you guys on that. And so pivoting from that, what I can wrap up on the topics we left on last week was that the 
register setup for or the backend register setup is finally complete which we are stoked about because it's a really great milestone in my opinion now you get to get log in into the app and then we have all of the initial setup that you need on the database and even you're receiving an email for the login or sign in, sign in sign up uh, successful well talking about backend and data database we made some adjustments on the database basically adding some support for enterprise that we're going to do in the future because one of the things i'm noticing the most right now is that i don't want to touch a lot on the database in the future so i'm going to stress test all of the features that, that we might need at least make a great base out of it because you don't want to be deleting data or doing some extra complicated migrations when it comes prime time or production time. That's just something I'm really scared about. I don't know. I really have to study that a lot more. Uh, don't take my advice on this. Some advice I'm just talking to you guys about it, about my experience is that I really want to study that area a little bit more because I'm being faced with a lot of deleting data recently because we are changing a lot the database. I mean, perhaps that's because of it, because we are constantly changing the database uh, that we see better fit. There's a lot of additions to it. And probably when we go to production time or really putting out the app for users to log in, it's probably going to be more stable, but I just really have to research that a whole lot more. Another amazing progress that I'm stoked is finally I've designed the setup on the backend for, I mean the backend and the frontend too, for the auto save of the projects and live collaboration. So basically i mean i can make a whole video about it perhaps if that is working let's just put it to the test you know what i've done as of right now is just making a flow chart out of it and you know just trying to f see my ideas how they flow or they not and i think i came to a really solid conclusion as of right now for the setup that we i mean <laughs> i haven't put into practice i haven't developed it yet because I'm just busy with a lot of st other stuff that's perhaps more important. I mean, that's really, we can make it at any time, I, in my point as I see it. Uh, but I just wanted to work a little bit more on the canvas first, just get a feel of it, change a whole lot more things. And perhaps as we go on or as we see the ne uh, necessity for it, we start implementing it. And when that happens, and when I get the results about that experiment and the conclusions I got from this, this setup, I'll probably make a video sharing it all with you guys and even how I did it. So if you are interested in that too. Well, but what I can tell you right now is that I think it's just really simple. It's basically using, using socket.io type script library and JavaScript too, with Redis cache, so caching, a caching database, and AWS S3. And I'll leave it at that because it's really experimental. And I'll tell you if I have success on that in the future and if we change the setup or not, it's perhaps better to showcase to you guys then. And about the dashboard, I mean, it's really, really improved and the new design is finally stable. We are adding the pages and also is working on that. It's really looking nice, in my opinion. Uh, we co-designed it and co-developed it. I think it's looking just amazing, my point of view. I mean, it's a dashboard, you know, you won't get really a absurdly amazing product out of it, but it just has to be functional and at least a little bit pretty, you know, so... It, it just does its job and we are happy with it. It just looks good. It's fine for us. We just want the maximum usability out of it. Well, to wrap this up, I can tell you guys what I'm doing right now. So basically, I am starting to go a little bit deeper on the managing of the, the state on the canvas. Essentially, my problem right now is that the Excalidraw API or uh, code base that we we are using as reference 
for building of the canvas is just client-based. So what does this mean? Essentially, it means that we're going to have some trouble with server-side rendering in XJS. Because if we want, for example, live data of the elements of the canvas, we can do that by a trigger like on change of the canvas or on pointer change. So if you move your mouse, it will fetch the all the data, all, all the states from the client side. The problem here, and it's a huge one, is that we get a really significant performance penalty. And that's just unacceptable, obviously, because the software has to be as much performant as we can, possibly. And if that slows down the application, that's a no-no for us. So that's a prompt solved this week. And as I mentioned, I'm just working on the layers panel. So I already have some styles on it. It's looking good. And let's just make it functional now and really start delving onto the canvas. That's just what I'm happy with. That's the core of the application, you know? So that's our, our bread winning product. That's just what it is. And as much as we invest on it and we go at it, uh, the more happy I am with it and with the progress too.